Hiya folks. I just wanted to throw together a quick video because just today, just earlier today, a new, so a lot of changes took place in the Spring AI project. Some of them breaking changes, so if you've been using Spring AI for a while, you're probably going to want to go um, make some updates. Uh, but in the 0 0.8.0 snapshot, there are a few breaking changes, but among those breaking changes are, is actually something cool and new that Spring AI couldn't do before. Spring AI, up until now, uh, was text-to-text. -text. It basically took in a textual prompt and responded with a textual answer. And that's great. There's a lot of great use cases for that kind of thing. But... Um, People have been spinning uh, their wheels and trying to figure out how to use Spring AI to generate images. Uh, the same way you might use, you know, create images with all sorts of different things um, out there that, you know, all these different AI tools out there that create images. Can Spring AI do that as well? And the answer is, as of today, yes, it can. It can use OpenAI or it can use Stability's APIs to do that. With OpenAI, it can use either Dolly 2 or the Dolly 3 model. It defaults to Dolly 2, but you can also specify that it used the Dolly 3 model. Okay, with that said, I want to show you how to do that. It was so much fun. I kicked the tires on a little bit uh, later today, and I, I wanted to show you what I did. So with no further ado, let's get started. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go create a very simple project that's gonna show off some of the new image generation support that uh, Spring AI now has. So I'm gonna create a brand new project. I'm gonna call it, uh, what do we wanna call it? I don't wanna put it there. I'm just gonna go put it in my raw project. I'm gonna say Spring AI Image Gen. That's what we're gonna call it. And I'm going to use Maven just because I feel more comfortable using Maven, um, especially when I'm live coding. Not that I don't like Gradle, but just Maven makes me feel more comfortable. Um, so I'm going to say next. I'm going to go ahead and pick web because I'm going to I'm going to expose a Spring MVC endpoint during all this work, and I'm going to say create. And I'm going to get my new project, and it's going to be all well and good. I'm going to close the help. Never read that. I'm going to make my window a little bit bigger. So we can see everything that's going on. And I go into my palm file, and the very first thing I'm gonna go into my palm file and do is I'm gonna add the Spring Snapshot repository. And the reason I'm gonna do that, uh, see that Copilot's already offering me the milestone repository, which is not really what I want. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead and take that and just change it a little bit. Um, I, want the, I want the Snapshot repository. But the reason I need that is because Spring AI is not yet GA and so you're only going to get it if you get it from the snapshot repository let me take a quick glance at what I'm looking at there and make sure it looks right I think I need to do this uh, snapshot enabled true thank you all right copilot did a okay job um, all right now with that said I'm gonna go ahead up and go up here and one of the things I like to do when I'm working with spring AI spit actually it's probably a good idea with a lot of projects but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do it here is I'm gonna go ahead and add a um, a property called spring AI version and I'm gonna set it to 0, 0.8.0 .0 snapshot and I'm gonna use that down here that way you know if a 0 0.81 snapshot or 0 0.9 snapshot came out tomorrow uh, it would be a real easy matter for me to just change this and then of course because it's a snapshot see what else breaks when I do things like that but um, okay here we go I'm gonna go ahead and add my dependency on spring AI and let's just see if it gives me the right stuff it did not so let's go ahead and type type it out myself group ID org.spring framework dot AI uh, artifact ID that's all wrong Copilot actually was doing a decent job of uh, suggesting the right things earlier when I was doing this, but right now it's doing a pretty crappy job of suggesting stuff. So I'm going to go with Spring Boot, Spring AI, Open AI, Spring Boot Starter, and the version I'll use is Spring AI version. Thank you, we got that part right. Cool. All right, the very next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to Source, Main, Resources, application.properties and I have to do the most if I don't do this now I'm gonna forget it I'm gonna set spring.ai.openAPI key equal and here's my trick I set it to an environment variable called openAI API key now 
I'm going to have to set that in a moment when I run this, and I'm not going to show you my API key. There's, it's just I'm not going, going to do that because I don't want you using it and, you know, rack, racking up my my AI bill. So uh, right now I'm keeping my AI bill relatively low, despite the fact I use this all the time. But if everybody watching this video were to go use my key, suddenly I'm going to go broke. So I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to show it to you. I'm just going to go ahead and right here just set it to an environment variable called OpenAI API key. And I, I would recommend that you do that too for your projects. Um, very next thing I'm going to do, checking my notes over here to make sure I don't miss a step. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and in my main class, I can do this in any configuration class, but this is a nice convenient place to do it. I'm going to create a bean of type image client. Now there are two image clients that come currently with Spring AI. One of them is an open AI client, the other one is a stability client. And so you could use either one of those. If you're wanting to use the stability client, there is already auto configuration for you and it's going to auto configure that as long as you have the correct library in your in your class path. But for open AI purposes, there is at least not yet. There is no auto configuration. So, to do this, I'm going to need to uh, declare a bean explicitly. So I'm going to say new OpenAI image client and it's going to take my API key. Now I don't want to hard code my API key here either so I'm just going to put in a variable called API key and I'm going to declare that up here as a string API key and now I need to get that from somewhere and the best place to get it is from value and where I'm going to get it from is, I suppose, um, I suppose I did that wrong. I suppose what I could do, well, I kind of put quotes around it, my, my bad. I was typing and thinking at the same time, and those never work. Um, what I could do is I could reference OpenAI API key here directly as an environment variable. I could do that, and that would work. But I've already set it to spring.ai.openai.api key, so I'm going to, I'm going to use that instead. And why doesn't it like that? Did it do? Did I do it wrong? It's wanting. Oh, it's. I'm sorry. My bad. I'm not supposed to give it the API key here. I'm supposed to give it an Open AI Image API, and that that's going to take my API key. There we go. That's going to make it happy. Cool. All right. So I'm going to and just reference this this variable here. I don't want to really reference the. Even though I could, I don't want to really reference the environment variable here and I'm going to go ahead and only reference the environment variable in one place and what's cool about the, doing it that way is that this property is the one that Spring AI's OpenAI support is going to use everywhere um, not just for image generation but for everything else so set, set it in one place here and then I can use it wherever okay cool now that I've done that I'm about to create a controller that's going to generate my image for me uh, and to do that though before I get get too carried away with the controller I do want to create a record that is going to represent the uh, the post request that we're going to handle in that. And it's going to be a very simple record. Uh, first off, I need to make sure I pick record, and I'm going to call it image gen request. Cool. And it's going to take a prompt as its input, and that's it. That's a, It's a very simple, nothing else, no max tokens, no string or anything like that. I'm just going to just give it a prompt. Now we're ready to write that controller. Now this controller, because it's generating an image, is not going to be a REST controller. Um, it's going to be a good old-fashioned regular run-of-the-mill Spring MVC controller. So I'm going to use the controller annotation. It is going to take as a um, as a parameter to its constructor, it is going to take an image client. So I'm going to go ahead and assign that to the private final image client. I'm going to use that down here. Whoops wrong line there we go and I'm gonna say okay post mapping I'm gonna take a post mapping request for image gen and I'm gonna say public string because I'm gonna return after this is over I'm gonna actually return a redirect to a URL so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna say image gen and it's gonna take an image gen request as the uh, input as the request body and it's going to take that, and right now this is returning image gen, so it's thinking it's going to be a view name. We're going to change that in a minute, but for now, let's go ahead and get the guts of this written. I'm going to say image prompt, uh, image prompt, equal new image prompt request.prompt. I'm basically creating a prompt that I'm going to pass in to the uh, Spring AI's 
uh, image client. So I'm going to say, okay, now that we've got that, I'm going to say image response. I'm going to get the response back when I say image client dot call image prompt. Cool. Now, what I get back from that is uh, I get back a URL. So response dot get uh, result dot get, and I can get output, and then from that I can get. And at this point, I have a couple of options. I honestly, I have two options I can work with. I can either get a URL or I can get base64 JSON. I can get kind of a JSON response that has some uh, B64 uh, data that represents the image in it. And then I would have to go take and unpack or undecode that base64 uh, to get the actual image. And what I found is either one of them works fine, but the code to actually deal with the base64 is a little bit more work than just dealing with the URL. So let me show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to say, okay, get that URL. And then what am I going to do with that URL? I'm going to assign it to a string called image URL. Cool. And now that I have that, now we're ready to go ahead and change this to a redirect colon image URL. And no, I don't want that. I don't know why it thought I needed that. Okay, cool. So I'm redirecting to whatever that image URL is. Cool. Now, I this is the point where I am going to quickly come up here because I'm going to be running this from the IDE. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to go edit my configurations. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to set my environment variable. So open AI API key equal. And at this point, you're not going to see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to freeze the video for just a few minutes. I'm going to pause, for, cut out the, the little bits that I don't want you to see, and then I'll come back. So bear with me. Be right back in just a few seconds. Okay, we're back. Now, I've already pasted it in there. I'm ready to run it. With any luck, this is just going to work. It's going to start up just fine. Of course, when I'm recording, doing live coding, things like that, anything could happen. So let's hope for the best. We got our ASCII art, we got Tomcat started on port 8080, that is exactly what I wanted to see. Cool. And now, let's kick the tires on this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come over here, I don't know what just happened there, ignore that. I'm going to give myself, not that, I'm going to give myself a window to work in, a iTerm window. I'll bump up that font so you can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to be using, I could use curl, sure, I could use curl. Uh, curl is a lot of work. I don't want to use. I don't want to do a lot of work. So I'm going to use uh, a tool called HTTP IE. If you've not heard of it, uh, it's a fantastic tool. It, it assumes a lot of things, like it assumes JSON input, it assumes JSON output, unless you tell it otherwise. It assumes uh, local host, so you don't have to actually specify the host, in, unless you tell it otherwise. Um, it, it's just much easier to use than curl in a lot of cases. So I'm going to use HTTP dash F, and what this means is follow the redirect. So I'm going to get a redirect back from my controller. I want you to follow that redirect. Now, where what's the request I'm going to make? Well, it's image gen, if I remember right. Is that that's what I set it to, right? Yeah, image gen, but not not a not an uppercase G. Okay, there we go. Image gen, and now I don't need it to give me the window. Uh, give me the stuff. I'm going to say prompt equal dogs playing. Let's have dogs play Monopoly. Dogs playing poker is so cliche. Dogs playing Monopoly. I'm gonna out. I'm gonna output that to dogs Monopoly dot PNG, and let's see what happens. Cool. It failed. Of course it did because people are watching me. Let's see what I did wrong. I get a 401 incorrect key provided. Well, that's that's interesting. Um, Let's see. I bet you I know what's going on because uh, it's it looks like it's treating the key not as a uh, a JSON. I'm sorry, not as a uh, replacement, but as something else. I think yeah, I know exactly what I did. I did something stupid. Okay, that's easy to fix. Let's come over here, uh, right here. I, I meant to type a dollar sign there. I did not. I typed an at. Don't know what I was thinking. All right, now everything should be fine if I restart this. Let's try it again. All right, it's restarting. We're going to get our ASCII art. Tomcat starting up here momentarily, and we'll come back to our window. Yes, now we're ready to do it. Let's see what happens. Now, it does take a few seconds to generate an image, uh, so we'll wait patiently. Yeah. 
and there it is. All right, now if this worked, we should have a picture of dogs playing Monopoly. Let's give it a shot. Now, I, I have no idea what that picture is going to look like. I, I trust that my prompt is not going to create anything offensive. Um, OpenAI is pretty good at not creating offensive things. So um, if it does, then I'm going to come back and edit this out and try again. But let's give it a shot. Well, I don't know exactly what 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 makes that think that's monopoly. That's that's odd. Um, that is really odd, in fact. Um, but it is dogs, and they are playing something. Uh, it's not really the best picture I've ever seen. But what I am doing here, what I can definitely tell you for sure, is that I am using the Dolly Two um, model. And the Dolly Two model, while it sometimes does a decent job, and it has some features that you can't use with Dolly 3 such as you can't have multiple images with Dolly 3 but you can have you can have it generate multiple images at a time with Dolly 2 uh, for example there's a couple of other things you that Dolly 2 is not is better at than Dolly 3 Dolly 3 generally generates a better image so let's go change our controller slightly so that we're gonna get a better image so to do that I'm gonna come over here I'm gonna create a new object called image options we can just call it options for short I'm gonna use this image options builder I'm gonna get a builder from it and then I'm gonna go ahead and call build because if I don't I'm gonna to forget to do that and now I'm gonna go specify my model I'm gonna say with model whoops I need a dot in there with model doll e3 there we go and now to use those options when I when I pass in uh, to my prompt I'm gonna say image prompt I'm gonna still give it the prompt but I'm also gonna give it the options now let's give that a spin let's restart the app give it a spin and see if we get a better picture of dogs playing Monopoly because that picture we got was not so great so let's pull my window up I'm gonna say dogs playing Monopoly at this time with Dolly 3 and see if we get a better one And any moment now, come on. Come on. I guess Dolly 3 is a little slower, probably because it makes better pictures. Let's see. Hopefully, it's a better picture. Are you ready for it? Here's the unveiling of the great piece of art Dogs Playing Monopoly. And yes, that does look like Monopoly, and that does look like dogs playing Monopoly. Uh, the dog there in the back, the Rottweiler, uh, seems to have a lot of, I guess that's money, I don't know what that is in his hand, but he has a lot of it. And uh, then there's that little dachshund over on the on the right side there, that's awful cute. But yes, dogs playing Monopoly. And I did that with Spring AI 0 0.8 snapshot. All right, and that's it. Thank you. All right, a little bit of recap. What did we do? Well, first off, we made sure we're using uh, Spring AI 0 0.80 snapshot. This is the very latest version. It just literally the changes took place today. And so I even, in order to do this, I, I was still pulling like a previous snapshot from my local cache. I had to go build Spring AI manually to get that. By the time you see this, it probably won't matter. The latest snapshot will probably be out there in the snapshot repository, no problems. But I had to go actually build Spring AI to get the latest snapshot code so I could I could do this video. And so what I did is I made sure I'm using the latest Spring AI 0 0.8.0 snapshot. I created a bean, an open AI image client bean. And I had to do this because at least currently uh, Spring AI does not have auto, -configure, auto configuration for the open AI image client. It does have open AI um, so I'm sorry, it does have auto configuration for the stability image client, but not, at least not yet, it does not have that for the OpenAI client. Then I went and created a controller that took that uh, client as a dependency and used it to generate an image based on a prompt that is passed it, that is posted into the controller. I used a record to capture that prompt, pretty simple record, and then I post, I took that, that, that prompt and I sent it through the image client to create an image. What the image client gives gives me is either a URL or a, or a JSON with some Base64 encoded um, image 
And then it's up to me to decide which one of those I want. If I use the base64 encoded image, it's up to me to decode that to get an image out of it. Instead, what I chose to do is use the URL. You see, when OpenA, at least with OpenAI, I don't know how it works with stability, but at least with OpenAI, the URL I get back uh, has, I think if I remember right, it, it re remains out there for up to an hour. And so as long as I go fetch that image within an hour of making the request, we're good to go. I can use that, that URL all day long. But I went and instead of going and fetching the URL manually, what I did is I just simply in my controller returned a redirect to that URL. Then when I went to the when I ran that and I went to the command line. Now this is after I made a few adjustments that you you saw in the video. But once the final product was there, I went to the command line, I used httpie, I told httpie to follow redirects which it needed to do, and then I told it to save that to redirect the output of that request to a file called dogs.png and then I open the the file open the image and there you see dogs playing Monopoly that was awesome all right that's it that's essentially how you do it of course there's other things you can do with this there's other options you can set you can set the you know the width and the height of the image there's other things you can do with that image options object you could of course use stability I have not had a chance to try that yet I wanted to, I was so eager to show you this what I do with OpenAI that I haven't even tried stability yet but you can do that um, and knock yourself out let me know if you have any questions let me know if you've created any wonderful pieces of art um, mention me on Twitter if you do if you post it on Twitter or any other social media mention me and speaking of that here are my there it is my social media uh, locations I there is a typo in the blue sky when the S and S and the K are transposed I should fix that but other than that there's where you can follow me at the various social media things so if you put if you do generate an image using spring AI and you post it to one of the social media things mention me there I'd love to see it so I can, I'd love to know what you did uh, go check out my website Habuma.com has all these social media things uh, links there for you and also check out my books they make great gifts uh, Mother's Day's coming up or not no actually it's a few months away my wife's birthday's coming up so if you want to purchase something for her that would be great too but I don't think she wants my book because we have plenty of them around the house but with that said thank you very much I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time